welcome to the next wonderful chapter fundamental and technical analysis this chapter is a part of security analysis of your chapter in your study material in this chapter we are going to learn how do investors select securities and in case of fundamental analysis what are the various factors he analyzes before he takes the investment decision in technical analysis basically we will learn the use of past performance of a stock past data use of statistics and then taking investment decision as to when to buy and when to sell so let us begin this wonderful chapter factors affecting investment decision in portfolio management so what are the factors which govern the investment decision when you invest think of yourself what factors do you keep in mind so one of the most important factors is the objective of investment portfolio why are you investing answer why are you investing so somebody can say i am investing to earn capital gain i want to earn more and more profit somebody will say i want to invest to keep my capital safe and earn regular income i am not interested in taking too much of a risk so accordingly they will select the security so your objective will determine where you are going to put your money objectives can differ from individual to individual and organization to organization a young person like you may invest 100% in equity share may invest in more risky shares but an old fellow a 70 year old retired person he will not invest his entire hard earned money in equity stock he will prefer that capital should be intact he should get regular income so that he can uh, use that money for his day to day living because he does not have other source of income so aggressive company will be willing to take high risk for a high capital appreciation whereas risk averse investor will not invest in highly risky stock like one example is given there is a company which is looking for investment of provident fund of its employees so they deduct provident fund then they have to invest it when the employee will retire they can make the payment to him where do you think they are going to park that surplus money or the provident fund money of the employees they are going to park in safe avenues safety is more important than high capital appreciation thus as a portfolio manager be very clear about your objective what do you want safety of principal or high capital appreciation accordingly we select the securities next is selection of securities portfolio manager has to decide the kind of investment in which he has to put the money so once your objective is clear the next task will be where to invest and then what to buy so your selection of investment depends on types of securities that is debenture preference share equity share government bond mutual fund units these are so many securities available in the marketplace according to your objective you will select the type of security according to your risk taking ability you decide the proportion between fixed and variable yield securities fixed yield securities are less risky but give less return variable yield securities are more risky but they offer high return then you will compare the relative risk and return of the stock you will try to balance between risk and return if you want to earn too much of high return then you will have to take too much of a risk also like your current course you are doing and therefore the risk becomes too high so ideally what the investor will do while selecting the investment he will try to balance risk and return then he will select industry first 
suppose you want to invest in share market so you will decide in industry like for example you may decide to invest in automobile industry select those industries which have high growth potential that means you know in future there is going to be huge demand pharma company huge demand look at the past performance of this industry look at the future prospects and then select the industry after selecting the industry let us say for example you have selected banking industry you think that the future of this banking industry is bright growth potential is there then you have to select the companies because there are so many banking sector companies listed on the stock exchange like hdfc sbi bank ICICI Bank or maybe Axis Bank, Punjab National Bank, like this. There are so many. Are you going to invest in all of these? No. Select the companies in whose shares or securities investment will be made, keeping in mind the growth potential, future performance, management, profitability, earnings, dividend record. So that will discuss in a sec separate segment called fundamental analysis how to select companies that is also a part of this current chapter third factor affecting the decision in portfolio management timing of purchase when should you buy and when should you sell so theoretically we should buy and sell at the right time what is the right time Theoretically, right time to buy a security is when the prices are low and sell the security when the prices are high, above the normal, more than the normal level. But practically, it is very difficult to identify when have the prices reached the lowest point and when the prices have reached the highest point. Human beings become greedier when the prices are high, they tend to buy more. And when the prices are falling, they become fearful and they start selling. So human psychology works in opposite way. They tend to buy more when the prices are rising and tend to sell when the prices are falling. But actually, uh, it should happen otherwise. So this paragraph we have discussed now. Fundamental analysis for identifying industries with growth potential. This is very important if you want to become a long term investor. For long term investor, they should search for industry or companies which have long term growth potential. This paragraph is not for day traders. Day traders are people who buy in the morning, sell in the afternoon or sell in the morning, buy in the afternoon or buy today, sell tomorrow. This is for long term investor. So what long term investor will do, he will identify industries with long term growth potential. He will do the statistical analysis of the past share prices, assess the intrinsic value of an industry or the company's share. What do you do when you have to assess the intrinsic value of an industry or the company's share? You will look at the profitability record. You will take the last 4 5 years of PL account, cash flow statement, earning per share, various ratios. So, that will help you to analyze the profitability of the company. Then you will see the demand and supply position in that industry, whether demand is more than supply or not. So, say for example, if it is a pharmaceutical industry, there is a huge demand. And therefore, you know that the sales will continue to grow, profit will continue to grow. So, in such industry, you can invest. Then you will analyze the industry's special characteristics. Every industry may have different characteristics, like for example, banking company are subject to lot of NPS, automobile company depends on uh, imports for components then technology oriented company change in technology 
okay and the company can become outdated soon so these are different some industry have labor problem they don't have labor or there are labor strikes and then one more thing you have to assess an industry or a company will perform smoothly if there is a healthy labor management relationship these four points are just uh, example are just few example of factors we take, take into account while doing industry or company share analysis again again depending upon industry company you can analyze many other factors so let us look at the statistical analysis of past share price paragraph 1 point number 2 so what you have to do look at the long term trend in the share price of a company is it growing or not compare that with other companies belonging to that industry so first you see growth in the share price then next is compare compare with other firms which other firms same industry you will compare sbi share price with id uh, idfc bank or icici bank you will not compare state bank of india share price with infosys then you will compare with some index like in india you have bank nifty so see the growth record of bank nifty or sensex okay bank nifty sensex nifty compare with them see how sensex has performed how this stock or this industry has performed has it performed better than the benchmark index or not and accordingly one can decide whether to invest in a particular industry or company or not so analysis of share price indices over a number of years not just one week or one month this analysis should be done for a long time period this will help us to identify industries or companies which are highly rated by the investors point number 2 is very very important and today we will learn how to assess the intrinsic value of an industry or the company share after identifying industry with the high growth potential the next step is to assess the value of the concerned industry or company so as a portfolio manager as an investor first you sh shortlist industry then out of that you have to shortlist the company where you have to invest for that you have to do the industry and the company analysis industry analysis means what are the overall factors which affect an industry and therefore which can affect the price of shares of the companies in that industry so do industry analysis which is for the entire industry and then narrow it down to company analysis which will be involving analysis of the strength and weakness of a particular company so industry analysis will involve demand and supply analysis whether in this industry there are too many suppliers as compared to the demand like for example let's say automobile companies there are too many companies which have now started selling cars in india so supply is too much relative to demand so they can't make much profit because competition will bring down the price but if the demand is high compared to supply then such industry will have high growth potential so demand and supply is very important for investment decision purpose invest in company or industry where you have lot of unsatisfied demand and that industry is going to grow in the near future or also in the long term second thing we have to see that the industry is profitable that is it is such industry where you can make profit some industries do not generate too much of profit like for example airline industry because the cost is too high compared to revenue potential 
and they are subject to lot of regulations. So that makes such industry uh, not a very profitable proposition. And unless the companies make profit, they can't pay dividend and you won't get the value of the share. Third thing one has to see the special characteristics of the industry because that will affect the working, the functioning of the companies in that industry and that will affect the earnings of that industry. Like for example, it is mentioned that there are some industries like automobile company, pharmaceutical company, they are dependent on imported raw material or imported component to a large extent. One risk is that exchange rate may rise which will make this raw metal or component very expensive. Second risk is that the government policy with respect to imports may change. They may raise the tariff, they may ban the import like it can happen between countries like India, China if they have political problems that might be affecting the business environment also. So too much dependent on China can also affect a particular industry. Point number four, labor management relations. Very important, please check how is the labor management relations in an industry. If the labor management relationship is not healthy, company can be subject to strike, lockdown, profitability will be low, they will not be able to deliver to the customer on time. So the end result is low profit, low dividend, low value of the shares. Another important paragraph now you should take mark that factors affecting the value of a particular company share which we call company analysis. In future when you will become equity analyst in some company then this paragraph you will remember that yes we had studied. Here we try to study in depth about several factors which can affect the valuation of a company. All good points, all bad points about a company you have to analyze because that might affect the valuation. So here I have prepared in a summary form what is written in your book in one full page. Company analysis will involve the size and ranking of the company. So everything is written in the book. If you don't want to write, don't write and if you want to write, you can write yourself like this. So when you are analyzing a company, check where does this company stand in the competition. What is its turnover? In terms of turnover, what is the ranking? Is it the best in terms of sales, second best? Then what is the profit? What is the ranking of the company in terms of profit? How much capital they have employed? In terms of capital investment, what is the ranking? Then check the growth record of the company. So factors which you will check in the growth record of the company will be P ratio. Is it more than the industry average or less than the industry average? And sometime a very high P ratio may also indicate it is overvalued company. A very low P ratio may indicate undervalued company also. So all this will help you to take decisions. Very high overvalued very low P ratio compared to industry is possibly undervalued shares. Then check the growth rate in earning. So you can check EPS of last 5-6 year and growth rate. Check the growth rate in the fixed asset block. So if company's fixed asset block is increasing percentage wise it means they are investing in capital asset management is confident about the future. One of the most important things we do in company analysis is their financial statement analysis. What you have learnt in financial management subject called ratio analysis. 
you have to take the last few years of financial statement prepare comparative or common size financial statement comparative or common size financial statement means all the figures are converted into percentage to total so in balance sheet all the figures will be percentage to total of the balance sheet in pnl account all figures will be percentage to sales and then we can compare over a period of time we can compare with other firms also compute the trend percentage also in return on investment return on equity trend of eps trend of dps dividend yield and do the calculation of all significant accounting ratios like investors look at the net profit ratio operating ratio okay gp ratio current ratio quick ratio various types of turnover ratios return on capital employed so that helps us to evaluate the company compare it with the other group com other companies in the same industry with the industry standard and then you will know this company is doing good or not look at the quality of the management don't forget very very important always look at the man behind the show who is running the show the management what kind of management is it is it a dynamic management which takes quick decision according to changing situation are they uh, going to take fast decision when any economic environment changes are these managed by professionals are these management honest one of the big problems in many countries why to blame only one country about the honesty of the management look at that although difficult to check but continuously if you monitor this company's management you will get some idea that whether this company's management is honest or not whether there are cases going on against them or not whether there are cases of excise violation income tax violation gst violation labor laws violation so that will give give you some idea as to their style of working and then whether the management has experience or not next is i have already discussed labor management relations look at the pattern of existing stock holding whether it is a family controlled business or professionally managed business if majority of the stake is with few investors who are closely connected the interest of the minority shareholders will not be taken care of so you can avoid such companies where the stock holding is concentrated in case of few people only and one more thing check the marketability of the share check the trading in that share in the stock market volume of trading otherwise what will happen you may think that the share is listed but then there must be demand for that share tomorrow if i have to liquidate my share i should be able to do it so that was company analysis a very important paragraph we have discussed next paragraph in fundamental analysis is investment strategy different investors have different strategies what is right what is wrong we cannot really say because different people have different attitude towards the risk and return there is one set of people who follow active strategy that means they believe that with the active portfolio management that means continuously monitoring buying selling identifying undervalued stock selling overvalued stock they think that they will be able to beat the market beat the market means they will generate return more than the market return so they follow active strategy active strategy will involve more frequent buying and selling of share 
they will invest in securities which generate high deal yield high interest and high capital gain of course this strategy has high risk and high return potential next is short term trading or speculator they are not interested in the long run they want to make quick buck as early as possible they can even buy today and sell by the evening or buy today sell tomorrow so they are called short term trader or speculator they are not interested in uh, doing the fundamental or technical analysis of the company they just want to make quick profit based on whatever little information they have as to what will happen to share price today the objective is to make heavy capital gain the risk is very high risk is very high because it is nothing but speculation so if what you are expecting goes wrong you will suffer terrible loss and the composition of their portfolio is flexible so there is no fixed formula of portfolio whatever generates best return at that point of time they are going to invest in that so this strategy will generate success only if your decision out to be correct you are able to correctly guess the market timing weights of various security in the portfolio and the individual stock selection but if something goes wrong that is against your expectation then you will suffer losses here passive strategy so it is a long term strategy it does not believe that through active management it is possible to beat the market so they will just select high quality stock with proper analysis and hold it for a long period of time so their strategy is give lot of time and attention in creating a portfolio of high quality stock and then invest it for a longer term buy and hold just because the market has gone little up or little down they are not going to reshuffle their portfolio they have a long term investment horizon next point is finding the intrinsic value of the share through fundamental analysis this is what this equity researchers do equity analysts do they try to find out the value of the share using fundamental analysis what is the worth of this share based on the fundamental aspects the fundamental analysis or value based investing is based on the assumption that the price of this share is the benefit the holder of the share gets in the form of future dividend so what is the value of the share the price of this share is present value of future benefit and future benefit what benefit will you get by investing in the share either you will get dividend or you will sell the share at certain price but the share at the price at which you will sell in future is also based on the present value of remaining dividend so if i want to sell the share after 2 year after 2 year the value is again based on the future dividend so according to value based investing the intrinsic value of the share is the present value of future dividend to calculate the present value we will use appropriate discount rate depending upon how risky is that stock the value thus arrived at is called intrinsic value or fundamental value so actually all this we have discussed in valuation of share chapter p0 equal to d1 upon k minus g if there is a growing dividend if the dividend does not grow it is constant d upon k so what the strategy should be calculate the intrinsic value of the share based on your analysis compare with the actual share price 
if the actual share price is quoted below the intrinsic value, the stock is undervalued by, but if the actual price is quoted above the intrinsic value, the stock is overvalued and should be sold because its price is going to fall. So, how do we value the share under this dividend discount model? If we assume that the dividend will remain constant, already discussed in the chapter on valuation of share, so I will not take much time here. If the dividend is expected to remain constant, the price of the share today is the present value of all future dividend. So, D upon 1 plus k, D upon 1 plus k square, D upon 1 plus k to the power 3 and so on. So, this becomes a geometric progression series. This becomes a geometric progression series and when you solve it, the final answer is D upon k. So, this also you wrote, note down there if not written. So, as per constant dividend approach, the intrinsic value is D upon K, K is the cost of equity. But if the dividend is growing at a constant rate of G, then the price of the share today is the present value of all future growing dividend. So mathematically it is D1 upon 1 plus K plus D1 upon D1 into 1 plus G upon 1 plus K square plus d1 into 1 plus g square upon 1 plus k square and it will go on for infinite period. This is a geometric progression series okay? and this can be solved mathematically but we are not going to do that right now and once you solve it, the value of the share today P0 on the final solution will be D1 upon K minus G, D1 upon K minus G. If last dividend is known to you and the growth rate is known to you, then the formula is D0 into 1 plus G upon K minus G. So this we have solved maybe 100 times in your batch, this formula D1 upon K minus G. We have used this in the chapter on valuation of share, then portfolio, business valuation, mergers and acquisition, even in some problems of forex we have used it, etc. So one of the highly used formula in uh, financial management subject. This formula will not work if the growth rate is greater than or equal to K. Because if the growth rate is greater than K or equal to K, either the answer will become undefined or will become negative. The price cannot be negative. This formula is also called Gordon's Dividend Growth Model of Stock Valuation. Now next is called, next point we will call. investment strategy. Next paragraph is investment strategy. Here we will compare P multiple of a company with its fundamental value. P ratio should be 10, should be an actual P ratio is 25. From your Fundamental analysis, you believe that this company should command a price earning ratio of 10, but then you are finding that it is actually commanding 25. This will indicate that the stock is overvalued. It is valued much more than what it should be and therefore the right strategy would be to sell. The other possibility is you believe P ratio should be 20 based on your fundamental analysis, actually is 10. So this is an indicator of undervalued stock. Search for such companies 
whose actual P ratio is below the fundamental P ratio value and then this is a good buy proposition, buy the stock. So that is how the investment strategies are decided. Key variables in carrying out fundamental analysis. If you want to make a career in finance, especially in equity research or portfolio management, then you have to know so many factors around you which can affect the value of a company's share like economy wide factors. First is factors which affect many companies in the economy like growth rate of national income. If a company's overall gross national income which is called GNP gross national product or sometimes we call GDP if that is growing the possibility is that the companies will also grow because the demand is growing but if the GDP is not growing GDP is negative growth rate of GDP is negative in some year so that means there is a possibility that certain industry or companies will also have negative growth. So look at the growth rate of the national income. Second thing look at the growth rate of the industrial sector. Maybe the national income may not be growing but the particular industrial sector is growing. So that will help you to assess the potential demand of the products and services of that industry. Third economy wide factor is inflation. As you all know inflation can affect the prices of goods and services. It may affect the demand because if the prices rise the demand can fall and therefore investor will not find it attractive industry which is subject to heavy inflation where the cost is rising because of inflation but selling price cannot be increased much either because of competition or uh, because of government uh, fixing the price in that industry. For some industries monsoon can be a factor that is companies which are based on agricultural product Mon monsoon can be important that can affect the price. Now we will see next paragraph industry wide factor. First paragraph was economy wide. They will affect all the companies in the entire economy. Industry wide factor will affect an industry. Okay. So this is economy wide factor. This is an industry within an economy. So we are studying factors which will affect an industry. Every industry or the company goes through product life cycle phase. So, industry starts, grows rapidly, reaches a peak and then declines. Okay. So, it depends on at which stage of product life cycle that industry is. If it is here, say for example, online education is right now growing. So if you invest in companies, they have lot of growth potential left. But then there may be some industries which may have reached this phase like physical stores where books are sold, physical electronic goods shop, okay, retail stores. Now because of online business, this industry may find that there is a falling demand and maybe sooner or later this industry may be wound up also. So that is important for an analyst to check where do we stand. Is it in the early stage of growth or is it in the final stage of growth and accordingly the future profitability will be affected. Second point already discussed with you demand supply gap. If the demand is very high relative to supply that industry is going to generate more profit. Barriers to entry, is it easy to 
enter that industry let's say for example telecom now there are only limited players in india because it is very difficult to uh, start a telecom business at a scale where you can compete with already existing players so now chances of new player entering is not much so therefore the existing players they will dominate the market whereas in case of online e-commerce kind of business anybody can start a portal with very little investment and they can sell their product so this way the entry barrier is not much in case of lot of e-commerce businesses and then of course the government attitude is the government in favor or against that kind of industry so if you are say manufacturing diesel vehicles so more and more state governments central governments are planning to curb ban this industry which is using diesel so therefore government is negative but if you are using electric bikes electric car then government is actually promoting this by giving some kind of incentive so this way the government attitude towards an industry can be beneficial for future profitability or can be disastrous and the third thing is now we will come to firm specific factors this is economy this is industry within an industry there is a firm i don't invest in the entire industry ultimately i have to invest in the firm which belongs to an industry so now i have to do the analysis of this firm so from economy we will go to industry then from industry we will go to the particular firm and then our knowledge of accounts and finance is useful we will compare net worth book value growth rate in net worth book value we look at the balance sheet and find out what is the sources and uses of fund that is your balance sheet analysis debt equity ratio okay growth rate in different parameters cross sectional and time series analysis that means comparison over a period of time and comparison with other firms comparison with other firms this is cross sectional and time series analysis that is firm specific so this was part 1 of this uh, chapter fundamental analysis